Yeah. And um, we have an investment policy currently, and um, we're trying to, to meet the guidelines that are set forth in that policy. And so that's why we keep our accounts diversified like this. Yeah. Um, and so the last one, and we'll talk about it more, but it helps me to understand it. When we think about our sort of outside of the capital fund, outside of the $5 million there, when we think about how much money do we want in the general fund, um, and is it six months or is it a year, that includes sort of our day-to-day -day checking account and the, seven, and the CDs, which is $7 million or so, right? So we're trying to think of our $5 million and change budget. Do we want to have six months, which would be two and a half million? Do we want a year, which would be five million and change? Do we want two years, which would be maybe closer to where we actually are? That's the question that we want to come to a consensus on as a board on our general fund balance policies. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. but that's a matter that's being referred to the Finance Committee sure. for further discussion. discussion. Yeah. And it will the the finance committee will have the opportunity then to make recommendations sure. for whether the policy that we currently have in place should be amended in any way. Um, our financial, you know, our business manager mm -hmm. actually has a tighter grasp and a better understanding of these funds than most of the institutions I've worked with over a long time. Mm -hmm. And in fact... I understand um, the CD funds, is that what you mean? The well, not only the CD funds, but also the Illinois funds. Okay. The Illinois funds do not always perform as well as our own investments do. There are times when they have actually not done as well as our, pers our separate investments. Mm -hmm. Um, she tracks that, and I don't have all the detail. Yes. I don't manage it. She does. But the reality is the fact that the Illinois has a fund doesn't mean that they always make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Those decisions do benefit us when they make the right decision, but they also harm us when they don't. Sure. So we don't have, we're not using them exclusively. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some monies invested there. Um, Tell me all the fines. I think all the fines go into that fund. That's correct. All the fines mm -hmm. that are paid go oh, into that fund. And then, just to be clear, what is our policy now on our general fund balance? We have a policy now. What is it? We do not. We do not have, we do not have we a do, policy. We, do we not have, have a practice and a history, but not a policy. It's not articulated, expressed in terms of a percent of the <coughs> budget or a set number of, of months. Um, Got so, it. Yeah. So that's why we will be meeting. We will be developing one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Director Rogers, would you also let me know if it's possible to provide the maturities of some of these um, either if it's the CDs or does do the they're all there on the table. Here? So it, it, took, it takes me two years to it's the all here. The second column it's, it's, is the maturity date for every one of the CDs. Okay, and that's what you were talking when you were referring to that the question you got was. So he means like I the see. latter is that they like buy two years at a time Absolutely. from there and that's the rate. It's staggered so, over different months yeah. when they're okay. bought. Yeah. And so right. what I finally just understood, uh, and I'm a little slow is that that's the, I'm, re I'm referring to the uh, CD ladder. The general fund <coughs> has $7.2 million. That's like the operating fund. And then the BE, which is to be renamed, I think, is our special reserve fund, is basically our capital fund. Mm -hmm. And that has five. Right, 5.3 mm -hmm. Okay, and so um, is it worth, we're going to be discussing the um, the purpose of the, or I guess the policy of the of usage of general funds at the at the finance committee meeting. Mm -hmm. meeting. Okay. And how much we should have. And how much we should, should reserve. Have. Okay. Right. Like how much should we um, reserve? Is it worth adding the message that Director Austin provided us um, on July 9th, I believe, regarding <coughs> the. 
Yes, it was July 9th regarding um, our June 16th board meeting discussion on the endowment fund, on the endowment fund and his discussion with our, our attorney and that, you know, there's a possibility that it can be absorbed into the general fund account. It's possible. That was what I'd said we are going to cover in the finance. But sure, I think but that's, that's a separate policy. action. That's a separate When action. we decide what is appropriate for us to recommend to the board. This message has a lot of information that I think is helpful to wh when will we be able to include this background, I guess. Can well, we, the background we may background or may not message. go into the minutes of our regular meeting. It will be incorporated into the Finance Committee meeting Which and be part of reaching a recommendation to the board absolutely. for whether there's any I, change I that should I understand that. Occur. I think it's worth maybe, could I read this? this message but we now? all got it well so we all have it i'm that. not sure why because we're not discussing what we're going to do with that endowment fund right now right i know we're not this is background on the possibility of the endowment fund being it, it's possible for what it's, purpose it needs to be covered first in the finance because committee. the question last week or last month was whether it could be and now we're finding out that our attorney had says had said that it, it is it's possible if we, if the finance committee decides to do that, it's possible that the endowment fund could be absorbed into the general. I but we're not making any recommendation. Right. We're not making any, so any action. I just think that this there's a whole the lot action. of information we in can add to minutes in terms of background notes that he got. I think it's for our information based on what we had asked, and I think when the finance committee meets, I think that's the time that we should discuss it, as well as bring that up. Okay. And then bring the recommendation sure. to the board. So I could mm -hmm. I could read that at the finance committee meeting. Well, you really wouldn't need to read it because it'll be included in that. But you could if you want to. But I think oh. as background, mm -hmm. that's all provided generally in the. It's, so it's going committee. to be okay. I mean, we'll take it into consideration. It doesn't all need to appear in minutes. The more Anthony's emails are public, the better. His emails are exceptional. I agree. <laughs> they are great. I agree. I mean, this right. explains so much to That's me. That's fine, but I think yeah. the board as a whole needs to get some education before we, and it will come out when it's public meeting, and anybody can come to the finance committee if they want to, because all our meetings are open. Are there other questions about the finance committee or treasury's report? in item 6A. Where, I, I do. Where do you, um, you mentioned, or the number, the docs show we're shooting about 96% of budget, but there will be some additional monies allocated when, I'm paraphrasing you, Roger, that um, we spent about 96% of budget, but that number will change a little bit. Well, not all of the June bills have arrived yeah. as of the date that this is prepared. So my, my yes, only they have is, actually run. Well, they have. They have now. Yes. Now, I, I think as a point of clarification, yeah. it's it's the auditor who will ultimately determine if there's things that may move from one fiscal year to another. Uh, so um, we're we're currently tomorrow undergoing our audit. So okay. um, we'll we'll know a little bit more about that. But as far as the business manager and myself are concerned. The 95.13 that you're seeing reflected in the general fund expenditures, that's end oh, of okay. year for us. Gotcha. So we, we feel that we have just just shy of a 5% um, end of year for us. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions about the financial reports for June? Does it, it probably does say in here, but does it say what we do with the 5% of our budget that didn't get spent? Not until after the audit is completed and we know what the actual numbers are. And typically what sort of variance do we expect from an audit? A, a lot or a tiny bit? I would That's say in this instance it'd be tiny. Tiny. Okay. It should be tiny, but so does it say you know, if, if there's an, if there's a change in the audit requirements that we're not aware of that the auditor informs us of, then that could change the numbers. Mm -hmm. The staff's best guess is that we're at 95.13. Okay. It does, it, it probably does, and I'm learning how they work. Does it say what we do with that extra 5%? No. Okay. That's a board decision. Um, Upon completion of the audit. Isn't it? Right. Um, okay. That's helpful. Thank you. 
Okay, the other item we need to do uh, deal with is approval of the bills and salaries for June. I, rec I move approval of the bills and salaries that are in attachment four. I will second that. And then I had a uh, edification question for Anthony again. On uh, so when, when we just buy books, do we buy them kind of direct? Is there some like consortium we buy? Not the ebook, but the regular books. Um, so do we buy ourselves? Does like Rails buy them? Does the state buy them? How does that all work? Um, we we have an account with a number of jobbers. The jobbers um, are organizations that get a group purchasing price for libraries. So we get them basically at cost. Okay. Um, so libraries, you know, a twenty-five dollar book um, that you would buy at Barnes and Noble would be maybe fourteen dollars for a library to purchase. Oh, okay. Um, so that's that's kind of how that works out. You'll see that we've got a lot of bills in here for Baker and Taylor. That's one of our, our primary vendors that oh, we work like with. Oh, that's like a for, jobber. Yeah. Interesting. And they're national, presumably. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So motion is on the floor. Do you want to do a roll call? Sure. Yes, that's a roll. Okay. Is that for me? Yes. Uh, Trustee Riddle. Aye. Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Trustee. Mickey um, D. Mickey D. Aye. Okay. Took me a while to pick that up. Mickey D. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The next item is the ordinance number, and Anthony had ordinance number 2019-20-193. It's the annual budget and appropriation or, ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2019-20 in tentative form. It's a levy that gives us the legal right to spend money, and uh, you've got a 10% overage for contingency, in, and also in case we get extra money, it allows us to spend that money. And so this is getting approval to post it. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Sure. Okay. Um, as a point of clarification, this document is not a levy. Um, so there are three, there are three um, instruments that the library uses to um, express its its budget or its financial commitments. So there are three actions that the board typically engages in. In the fall of every year, we do our levy. That's, that's the tax levy. That's when uh, we collect approximately 94% of our revenue is generated from local property tax. Um, we'll deal with that at a later date. Um, in the spring, we start planning our budget for the next fiscal year. And so the budget is what you approved at last month's meeting. Now, historically, this board has also approved the budget and appropriation ordinance concurrent with the budget. But as I've expressed over the last several months, I think that's a confusing process, and our attorney tends to agree with that as well. Um, simply because the word budget is in the budget and appropriation ordinance, it makes it sound like it's the budget, but it's actually not the budget. The appropriation, which is what is under consideration with us here this evening, um, establishes the legal authority for the library to responsibly um, allocate the revenue that it receives. Um, so the formula that our uh, attorney had expressed with us at our last meeting in our orientation session is that there actually really is no magic formula for how we would put this together. It kind of would vary. Um, in some instances, you may not appropriate more than what you're budgeting for. In other instances, like for the example of a, of a grant income, you may want to set your appropriation significantly higher, especially if you feel that you may be the benefactor of a large donation. Um, so that that is kind of what what we're looking at here this evening. So as our first foray into this version of the budget and appropriation ordinance, um, we've determined that um, a conservative 10% basis for overage um, over what we've got in the budget would be a reasonable tolerance for us to look at. Um, in past organizations I've worked with, that number could be 40 and 50%. But I thought just to kind of ease us into this so we could all get comfortable with the notion of what the appropriation is, um, since this is not a commitment to, in, to raising any taxes or anything, this is just, would, would we be able to responsibly spend the money that we receive? 10% seems to be reasonable. When we get to our next item on the agenda, I think that should become a little bit more clear, and as you've looked in your packets, um, our budget can vary on some items a little bit, plus or minus 10%, which is why I've, I've requested that we look at this 10%. Um, but I'm, I think maybe it would make more sense at this point to address any questions that you all may have about what the appropriation is or what the document is that's before you. 
Thank you. Um, so the 10% buffer, does that mean each line item got upped by 10%? That's right. Okay. And so the general, the contingency general fund, that's an additional sort of extra money that's, authorization? Yes, and that's pretty much what the attorney suggested is that if you were to receive a large donation um, and it came directly to the library and not the endowment fund, which we'll talk about later, um, but if the library were to receive a large donation, um, the contingency would allow us the flexibility to apply that within that fiscal year to one of those other categories. So essentially, uh, the reason to up every line item and have an additional $400,000 of legal authority to spend. And uh, actually, before I ask that, so in the $200,000 that says we're going to put an additional $200,000 into the capital reserve fund, that's... Let's slow down here. We're talking about too many things at once. Let's take, yeah. the, take the reserve out of this and let's let's talk the transfer. Okay, take that okay. out of there. Yeah. So, um, I've been, I read, I appreciate everything 